I guess at one point he does kidnap her, doesn't he? Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a get ready with me. That's why my makeup isn't done yet. Um, because we're going to do it. I have a bin here filled with random products, right? They're all newer to me products, but I think this is like the newest thing, right? They're all newer to me products. Um, so I'm gonna try these out today. I'm gonna give you kind of some highlighted thoughts, but primarily we're gonna be talking about like books and TV shows and movies because um, I used to, well, for a couple of videos there, I was doing like updates during favorites where I was talking about the books and uh, primarily the books that I've been reading and if I would recommend them or not, and then also sometimes some TV shows. And I didn't do that last favorites. A couple people asked about it. So I figured, why don't I just do it now? Like, we'll just have kind of a chill, chit chat, get ready with me. I need to get ready. I'm actually filming this on Sunday, and I have to, we're gonna go out to brunch, and we're gonna go to the grocery store, and we've got some stuff to just get done, errands to run, things like that. So I'm just, I just need to put some makeup on my face. Um, I did my hair, I did kind of this wavy mess, but it was quick, it was easy, it was fine. So I'll be, here, here's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna link all the products down below, and then if there's anything like, crazy I'll mention it during the video um, crazy good or crazy bad but for the most part everything will be linked down below and then um, I'll like talk about these in a speed reviews or something like that in the future um, we're just gonna chill out do some makeup talk about movies books and more okay so I'm just literally gonna go through my Goodreads here and also I feel like I should say this I've been doing my makeup um, a la the TikTok viral base routine but I've kind of just been using like random products and I am loving how it looks, so that will be how I do my makeup uh, today. I cannot for the life of me remember where I started or stopped last time. Um, but we're going to talk about books first. And I believe that I briefly spoke about the Mindfuck series. Which, again, if you are okay with uh, a little bit of gore and murder, I strongly recommend. Because that had so many twists that I never saw coming y'all. So many twists and so much good plot. Like it was insane to read. It's five books in the series, but each book is like a uh, hundred pages long. So they're very short books. This is like, like no product. Um, they're very short books, but they are so good. But I, I know that I've discussed that before. I can't remember if it was like in a favorites and fails or if it was just in general. I know that I've spoken about it on Instagram too. So I'm going to start with the book that I read after that, which is called Kyland. So Kyland is from the author who does Archer's Voice. I love Archer's Voice. That is one of the sweetest and saddest books I think I have ever read. Um, oh my goodness, it was so sad. So I went into Kyland thinking it was going to be kind of the same thing. And it kind of was. Like it's about these like poor teenagers from this town where everybody's like mining. And then... They form a relationship, but he, I don't want to give away too many spoilers actually, but there's like, okay, so there's a twist and then the twist happens and then there's another twist and it is heartbreaking. I did cry. So I ended up giving it three stars on Goodreads and if you guys have been watching, you know that my rating system on Goodreads is based on whether or not I would read it again and I feel like with Kyland... I would, but I would have to be in the right mood for heartache. Like, do you know what I mean? And I will say, I haven't been reading very much, and I'm going to talk about that more um, later on after I get through some of the books that are worth mentioning. I liked it. I need. I would need to be, like, in the mood to have my heart broken again in order to, like, want to read the book again. But I don't want to write it off because it was a really good book. It was just heartbreaking. All right, this next one was insane. I'm finally using my last BH set that I bought. This is the BH Lavender Luxe set. Okay, but first of all, the brushes are gorgeous and they match the palette that I'm going to use. Oh my goodness. Uh, the next book is incredible. Incredible. I could not put it down at all. And this is why and I only gave it a three stars and let me tell you why. I think that there's going to be a sequel I believe is what I read and I didn't realize that when I read the first one because y'all know I'm not a patient person. I do not like to wait for things. A sequel. I gotta wait for a damn sequel. But it's called Find Me Alistar by T.L. Swan. It is, um, it's like a time travel book, kind of, but it's also like a past lives book. And there's, 
so many twists and stuff. It's amazing. I genuinely, I could not put it down. I gave it three stars because I definitely want to like reread it, but I need like a sequel or something. It is so good. There's some issues that I have with it and you do kind of have to like suspend the belief of reality because it's more like fantasy-ish than I normally go for. I'm not normally a fan of like the fantasy based romances but this one was so good most of my book recommendations come from book talk and they've got uh, some of them i really don't enjoy and some of them are just some of the best books that i think i've ever read in my entire life and find me alistar it was kind of in the middle but it was really good like i feel like if i give you too much of the plot though it's going to give away spoilers but i will just tell you if you like mystery and a little bit of fantasy even if you don't I mean it's just a good it's just a good book y'all I'm gonna stop talking about it because I feel like I really can't give much away about the plot without like ruining what the book is about you know what I mean okay another book talk book I read Opium Skies which is from the In Vain collection which is also by C.M. Radcliffe and um there are I think three or four books in this series there are four I read three and I couldn't read anymore the romance right and uh, the guy and the girl meet they fall in love everything everything and then he gets addicted to um, like hardcore drugs I believe it was heroin so obviously if that is a trigger for you don't don't read the books but um so it's about him like kind of battling with his addiction and her being in a relationship with somebody who's in an addiction and who's in like an active ad addiction and it is a very good book but it's very real and it's almost too sad to read so i did not finish the series because it just got too sad um I mean, it, it got very redundant and repetitive in my personal opinion. I think the first book was the best out of all three of them, but it was very interesting. Um, if you've ever been like curious or if you've ever lived through that, if you've ever lived through that, you probably don't want to read it because, again, it is very sad and it's very repetitive, but it's very real. It's a lot of very real things that happen um, when you are struggling with addiction or when you are in a relationship with somebody who's struggling with addiction, and it's told from a dual POV. Um, but it's very sad and it's very it's difficult to read I think even for in, in the best case because there's a lot it's just the day-to-day -day and it's really heartbreaking so I liked the first couple books the first book was the best but then after that it kind of got to the point where I was like I don't want to read this anymore like this is not a fun time for me so I ended up not finishing the series and I moved on to something else and I don't plan on going back I don't think to reread any of them because it's just too sad. It's just too sad. I can't, I like sad stuff. I want my heart to be broken, but this was just too, a little too much. Honorable mention to Fake It Till You Break It by Megan Bradley. That's one of the um, like fake boyfriend trope stories, but I will say <laughs> that one was good because again, there was like, it was kind of a twist. I mean like, I don't think it was a great twist. Because I feel like we all kind of knew what was going to happen. But nevertheless, it was it was just a good story. I rated that one five stars because I'd read that again. Because that is the type of fake boyfriend trope that I like. I don't love the fake boyfriend tropes. But if I was going to read one, that would be the basis of what I would like. And again, I don't know how y'all talk about books. Because I just want to sit here and tell you guys what the book was about. But I don't want to give away the plot either. But basically, the girl and the guy make a, a, an arrangement. So the guy offers to be her fake boyfriend because she's interested in someone. And he's like, well, we'll just make him jealous. Uh, but then she ends up falling for the fake boyfriend, as, as you do. Um, and then it kind of goes from there. But there is, like I said, it's kind of a twist. But the book ends how you think it's going to end. I will. That's what I will say. That is what I will say. It is a good book, though. If you like the, that trope. I would check that one out oh my god okay see this is why I wanted to do this I don't know why I'm going through every book so I need to go through like the good ones okay I need to just go through the ones that actually matter here closer by Mary Elizabeth you guys what listen I love 
toxic relationships as much as the next person, okay? Those are some of my favorite relationships to read about. Um, the more y'all fight, the more interested in it I am, okay? <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think because I'm such a proponent for like healthy communication and healthy relationships and everything, and I'm the first person to be like, oh girl, you need to leave him. Um, for whatever reason, it's like the just the movies and the media that I consume and the books and everything. I love me a good toxic romance. Um, and Closer was too toxic <laughs> in fight. Fifty Shades of Grey didn't hit my bar. It was okay. I didn't, I'm not a huge fan of the books. The movies are complete garbage. But, like, that's a good, that's a nice, good, toxic relationship, right? I'm trying to think about other toxic relationships. I hated Twilight. Don't come for me. I hate it. I hated Twilight. Oh my god, it was the worst. But this one was so toxic. I mean, they, like, it was literally nothing but them trying to be with each other. And so it starts off with how they met, and then it jumps you ahead like four years into the future. And he, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys spoilers, because this one is just, it's too good. It's too freaking good. The guy is like trying to get with this girl while his girlfriend is inside, and her boyfriend is inside. And she's like, no, no, no. And he's like, yeah, you've always been mine. Let's do this. And then the boyfriend's like, oh, okay, we're gonna go home now. And the guy, I don't remember what their names are, but the main dude. He's like, why don't you and my girl, why don't the, the, the boyfriend and the, and the girl's boyfriend and my girlfriend, why don't y'all go and get something from like the liquor store or something. And then they go and then they die. <laughs> they get into a car crash and they die. And this sets off this book of these people going just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But it's not your regular, like, will they or won't they? Like, they will partially hook up and then get into a fight and it's a violent fight and then, like, the cops get called or they get kicked out of the hotel or something just insane happens and, like, everybody around them is like, you guys need to stop talking to each other. Like, you shouldn't be in the same room with each other. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that because we're in love. And oh my goodness, it is the most, the messiest thing. This is so liquidy. It is the messiest thing that I have ever read. It was so, you guys, I don't think you understand how messy a relationship has to be for me to be like, bro, I'm out. This is too much. It's too much. Also, very quickly, um, Taylor Wynn had talked about these like Beaky's blenders that she gets from Amazon and so I'm trying it out because I'm curious. It was a train wreck. I couldn't even finish it because it, I, I got like halfway through and I was like these they're never gonna stop. Like they're never and I, I man in books I can forgive a lot of stuff right. You kidnap the girl I can forgive you. Love makes you do crazy things. I can forgive a kidnapping in, in a book in a book not in real life. Don't do that in real life. Um, I mean, I can forgive, I can forgive a lot of stuff. You, you guys can see my book reads, my good reads, right? And, oh my goodness, it, it got to a point where even I was like, bro, you shouldn't be together. Like, you cannot come back from this. It's just not, this is not how, this is not how relationships work. Y'all need therapy. Um, it was insane. So I don't, <laughs> if you like mess, you might want to check that book out, but I could not, I could not finish it. Oh my god. The Dark of You by S.M. Shade. I am so sorry for the beginning of this video, y'all. I feel so bad because those videos, those books sucked. Like now we're getting into like the good ones. The Dark of You by S.M. Shade. This was a stalker romance. Okay. Um, fabulous. Except the way that it was written was kind of weird. And I was willing to forgive it, right? Because I was like, okay, you know, I like a good stalker romance. I didn't like the girl. Okay, because she... <laughs> It was really interesting how they did it, but the girl, like, she knows somebody is talking to her, and this guy shows up, and they do, like, physical acts together, and then she just completely goes along with it, like, right off the bat, like, doesn't, no questions, nothing, she just goes along with it, and I was like, okay, that's a bit odd to me, but then there was a twist in the book, and I feel like they had set it up to where the twist could have been great, and I mean just unbelievably phenomenal 
and it was what I was, ex I will say it was the twist that I was expecting because I feel like with the type of twist that this book did, you really can't get away from like people figuring it out, right? If you read like the first chapter, you'll know what I mean, right? Because that was my very first, as soon as I knew what type of book it was and what the trope was, and I had seen first chapter, I was like, oh, okay, well, that, so that's what, that's what ends up happening. Still fun to read. However, the twist is not what I thought the twist was. And then you find out a crucial piece of information. And I'm just like, what is the point of all of this? Like, why are we doing all of this? It just felt a little unnecessary. This will either be a really good idea or a really bad idea. You gotta trust the process, bro. You gotta trust the process. But like, I don't know. I ended up not liking it and I would not would not reread it again because I don't know what happened there this is one of the new Tarte cream blushes oh my god that is so much cream blush I, it was just too it was just too much for me it was just I, I didn't like it they could have done better with the twist um I just I was not personally a fan of the story then I started reading the cocky bastard series from Penelope Ward and V Keeland okay the first book, great. Oh my goodness. I did not have high expectations for it. I talked about it on Instagram. I started reading it like kind of on a whim and I did not have high expectations for it whatsoever. And you guys, I loved it. It was such a good book. It was so cute. The storyline was adorable. It was just such a funny, like nice rom-com with some drama involved. And like literally, I loved it. It was so good. So then um, there's like five books in the series, but they're all standalones. Or no, I think there's like six. I don't know. I never finished them. They can all be read as standalones though. Um, and then like the a character from the first book is briefly mentioned, but he doesn't like, you don't have to read the first book to know what's happening, okay? And so I read the first one and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love it. Let's go. I read the second one. It was cute. It wasn't the greatest, but like it was still kind of in that realm, right? It's not good that look. I'm just saying, you know, it was still in that realm of being like a cute, like, okay, I can live with you. The second one is called Stuck Up Suit. Okay. Then I read Playboy Pilot. And that one is where it got a little weird. And I was like, okay, I don't like the trope that they used because the trope in Playboy Pilot is um, like an accidental pregnancy, but one that's like not real. Was that too much of a spoiler? I'm so sorry. Um, and I, I was like, okay, I don't love this trope, but you know, I, whatever. I think I gave Playboy Pilot, what, three stars. I gave it three stars. Then I read Mr. Moneybags and I had to stop. And I will tell you why. If you don't want to know, just skip ahead. Mr. Moneybags, the trope is that they might be related. And I have my limits. I have my limits. I don't want to see that. They, they have this bond, they fall in love, and then it comes out that um, like their parents had an affair at one point in time and that they might be related. And then the entire second half of the book is them being related. And here's the thing, I could get over that, right? I was like, okay, I hate this trope, but whatever. But then, the guy gives this whole internal monologue where he's like, you know what? If we end up being brother and sister, that's fine. We'll go to a different country where no one knows who we are. And I was like, halt the brakes. You wanna do what now? Like, and that was where I was like, I'm done. I can't, what? I was all for it until this man is plotting out their life. I, I can't even, I can't, I cannot even finish the sentence y'all. What? What? No. I ended up, I finished the book. I did not read the next one because I was like, I cannot. Um, and I didn't read the whole last part of the book. I literally just skipped ahead to find out if they were siblings or not. And spoiler alert, they're not fucking siblings. <laughs> All of that was for nothing. And like, you knew they weren't going to be. An author is not going to put two siblings together and have them like flee the country. I mean, maybe, maybe. Y'all are messed up. There might be one out there. But I was like, I cannot, I cannot cannot do this. So I did not read the last one because I was like, what is this? Why? Why is this a thing, man? <sighs> what did I read after that? Oh, Monster in His Eyes, which is a duet. It's by J.M. Darhauer. Y'all. Okay. That's like, what, is it mafia? I don't even know what you would consider it. Maybe mafia. Like the guy is like above the mafia, right? Because he's so whatever. But it is so good and there are so many twists and it's one of those things where like I don't want to give away any of the twists but y'all 
if you like messed up romances, that is the one. I will say there is murder involved. I'll give you, I'll give you this. No, because that's like the big twist in, in the first book. I can't, I can't. I don't know how you guys do these like book reviews without giving away massive spoilers because I don't want to ruin it if somebody does want to read it. But just know it's good. There is spoilers, there's murder, there's love, there's some spicy scenes. I mean, this book has everything. You will laugh, you will cry. I feel like, um, I will say he doesn't, I guess at one point he does kidnap her, doesn't he? I was gonna say, it's not like a kidnap romance, but there is, there is a point in time when he does kidnap her. Like he has a reason to, kind of. It's not a great reason, but like he kind of, if you like kidnap romances, this is the one for you. Okay. But Monster in His Eyes, it's a duet. I read both books. They are both fabulous. They're on my Goodreads. You gotta check them out. And most of these books that I talk about are part of Kindle Unlimited, in case you didn't know, because I find these books on BookTok and then I get them from Kindle Unlimited. I read The Other Side of Blue. I did... I didn't like it. It was so weird to me and I didn't even make it to like the twist ending. I couldn't, I, I made it like 30% of the way through. It was just so long and drawn out and sad. I couldn't make it through that. Regrets by Nicole Dykes was a really good one as well. Um, I don't, I know that's part of a series called The Sterlings and I only read the first one and I can't remember why I only read the first one, but it is like a very good story. It's very interesting. Um, I mean, I don't really know like it's about all right I'm just telling you what it's all about if you want if you don't want spoilers skip ahead so it's about um this guy and this girl and this guy like this guy and his brother met this girl when they were children and she instantly got into a relationship like as the years went on um with the brother and the guy Lincoln was like massively in love with her though and did not hide it very well like he hid it but like he didn't hide it as well as he thought he hid it so this is my least favorite part of the base routine but it is also one of the most important so i just have to spray my face until it's wet and if you watched my video i had commented in that video she must go through so much facial spray and guess what you do you do go through so much facial spray but i will say it makes your skin look so unbelievably good y'all so now you gotta let that dry um but so he was like massively in love with her didn't want to admit it but like it was incredibly obvious and then the brother ends up dying she blames herself he blames himself they enter into this very toxic like punishment relationship is like the best way to describe it and it's just uncomfortable and then like there's another book again i didn't read the rest of them um i only read the first one I do know why I didn't read the second one actually because I know what the second one is about. It's about the other brother and I'm like I don't really care about his story because he was kind of an asshole in this book. There's just so much going on. There's so much going on. I do recommend that one and then if you liked that one I would recommend the second one. I have not read the second one but there's there are, there are twists in regrets that I think like I did not see coming and so the mystery of everything kind of unravels as you read the book and it's so good. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is so unbelievably good. It started a new book a couple nights ago um, and it's called Torn. It's Torn by Carrie and Cole. Um, it's part of a duet, and but the duets are like standalones, like they're not related to each other. And honestly, this one kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies and I don't think I'm gonna finish it. I'm like a chapter and a half in and already I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't understand the need for like these families to get together um but this this one is about a girl who falls in love with her dad's best friend but like he is like her godfather and helped raise her and that's weird like I don't like that so I don't think I'm gonna end up finishing Torn because I don't think I'm gonna be able to like like I have like a blockade up and I'm like oh, I don't know about like that you know, and I don't think I'm going to be able to like fully immerse myself in it. So I don't think I'm going to be finishing that one. But those are my current, uh, my current reads. That's what I've been reading. I have not been reading very much lately. And let me tell you why. Okay. Because I started watching this show and it took me forever to find. I talked about it on Instagram a little bit because I was trying to find this show in another show. And the one show it's, so they're, they're Spanish shows. And the one show is only available in Spain. And I was like, I'm gonna get a VPN, I'm gonna watch it. The issue is, is that with the VPN, I did that and I signed up for the Spain streaming service, but they don't have English subtitles. 
so I have no idea what's happening. Which really sucks because like you cannot watch it anywhere else and they just did like a reunion thing. They did a reunion like mini season or something and I can't, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm dying. But the one show that I've been very, very, very into is called, um, I can't speak Spanish. The English translation is called The Boat and it's a sci-fi show and you can get it through an app that you can get through Apple TV. So it's like I'm paying like six bucks a month to watch the show and let me tell you it is well worth it, okay? There's so much drama, it is so good. So it's called The Boat in English, that's what you would search for. And it has one of my favorite Spanish actors in it. He is incredible. I mean, just undeniably incredible. I love him. Um, and basically, it's about these kids who get on a scholarship boat. Um, so they're there on scholarships. It's like a teaching boat. And then there's a scientist who's on the boat who's one of the teachers. And the scientist, her boyfriend and like scientist team are doing an experiment. Something with like a particle accelerator. I will admit, I don't fully understand what the goal was what they were trying to accomplish but what they ended up accomplishing was opening up like black hole and all of the land in the world and all the people on the land sunk everyone's dead except for people on this boat they think now they're trying to find other people they're trying to find um like different lives and then they're trying to find so it, she said like 99 percent of the land was gone once she figured out what had happened. And so they think that there's like 1% of land left. So now their goal is to try to find this 1% of land or like literally any other people. But of course, like the people on the boat don't believe that this is what's happening and they think it's a social experiment. And then like they start to believe. It's very, it's a very complicated storyline, right? But the craziest part, where did my mascara go? The craziest part is that all of this is going on. They're only supposed to be on the boat for two months because that was how long the voyage was meant to be. But of course, now there's no land, um, so they don't have anywhere to go and they don't know how long they're gonna be out there. So they're trying to like ration their food and figure out what to do and God forbid, if anything happens to the boat and the boat gets hurt, they're screwed because there's nowhere else for them to go. There is an entire episode and it's like my least favorite episode that I've seen thus far, but it's the most, it's also the most like memorable one because there is an entire episode where a huge flock of like 40,000 birds, apparently they figured out that the birds that were flying in the sky when the black hole was created and all the land sunk, um, the birds that were flying in the sky didn't sink down because they were up in the air, obviously. And, but now they have been flying for days with no food, nowhere to go, nowhere to land, nothing. And so they attack the ship. And it's just, it's insane, it's insane. But then on top of this, you have a bunch of 20 year olds and then a small grappling of like older adults and then a five year old, there's a five year old too, on this boat and <laughs> the love triangles, y'all. Oh my God, the love triangles. There's like a love, like quint do you know what i mean it's insanity also i have this is completely unrelated but makeup hello i have the natasha denona i need a rose like set that i bought when it launched and i have yet to try it i got the shade daphne so let's see what we think there's three steps here um but like there so there's like a love like quint right it's five people who it's, it's very complicated there's a murderer on the boat a guy like got on the boat to escape a murder that he committed that he got caught for. Uh, there's a stowaway who's estranged father who didn't know, like, you know, who didn't know that he existed was on the boat because he ditched his mom. There is so much going on on this boat. And I don't know why. I don't know. Like, I feel like every time I watch, like, a foreign TV show, the episodes are always much longer. Um, I was very into that Turkish drama for a while. And the episodes of the Turkish drama were, like, an hour and a half long two hours long, two and a half hours long. It, they were like the movie, y'all. The episodes of The Boat are about, my God, that was loud. They're about um, like an hour and 10 to an hour and 20 minutes long. So it's still longer and you guys, they can pack so much drama into an hour and 20 minutes. And I, I don't know, I am a, like, that's my current hyper fixation obsession is this Spanish show about these people on a damn boat. It is so good. Cause you've got everything, right? You have the sci-fi element to it. You've got the romances. You've got the drama. You've got the, I mean, you've got freaking everything. 
there's a priest on the boat. Sorry about this lip color <laughs> when I bought it because for whatever reason Natasha did not know lip colors. I have a really hard time color matching and I am so excited about that. But it's it's just it's so fascinating to me. I love it. And that's so I've kind of like taken a break from books. I can't really get into any books right now. Like this is what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on the Spanish show. Um, and then the other show that I was interested in that I can't find was a cop show from like 10 years ago. But that's fine. That's fine. Eventually, one of these days, one of these days. But I have literally exhausted every avenue I possibly can to watch that cop show and I just can't do it. Um, but yeah, so those are the books and the movies, that, the books and the TV shows. Um, we actually haven't been watching a lot of movies. We've been watching Stranger Things, Kyler and I have, because the new season's coming out. So we're watching the first three seasons, I think. Um, we just finished season two. But we're watching that because I know the new season's coming out and then I know they're doing like one more season after this. I've seen like most of Stranger Things before, but not all of it. So it's, it's good. It's good. I like it. But that's what we've been watching. We haven't been watching a ton of movies. Um, we watched the new Spider-Man last night, which was phenomenal. Loved it. Just been watching um, like TV shows and stuff like that. But I've been having a really hard time getting into like any books or stories lately. Partly because I am like hyper focused on the boat. I don't know why. I don't know what enchantment it has over me, but it is such a good show. Um, and then partly because I just, I don't know, I can't like, I have to be in the right mood to read and I just have not been in that mood. So I've been like trying to find something to watch instead and I finally found the boat and it is so, so good. This is the makeup look for today. I love how it turned out. I really do. Um, there were some pretty good products in here, honestly. I love, oh my goodness, this Tarte C Breezy Cream Blush. That was like that, this really big one. It's freaking matte. Why is this so large? I don't know. But I use several Tarte products. Um, like I said, I do like them all. But I like how everything turned out. I like how it looks. Can I see again? Would be wonderful. I hope this was semi-informative to you. Like I said, I wasn't planning on filming this today. And then it ended up happening. I will leave everything linked down below. And then like I said, I will um, do updates with what I like my actual thoughts about the products in some type of speed reviews or something along that nature. Um, but it will all be linked down below. So end of the day. Let me know what you guys think about this. I hope this was informative. I feel like my thoughts weren't super coherent about some of the books, but I mean, if you guys are readers and you know, sometimes it's just, it's a little too much for your emotions to process. And some of those books were really good. Some were not so good, but some were really good. So I will leave my Goodreads linked down below as well. If you like this style of video, if you like me getting ready and talking about like what books and movies I'm watching and reading, let me know because I would love to do more of these. But if you'd rather these, like my book recommendations, and like only the recommendations be in favorites um also let me know so just how do you want to see because i don't want to make like full on just like this is a video about books because my primary goal here is makeup but how would you prefer to see it in favorites or during like a get ready with me we could do one every every few months or something like that when i've read enough books to actually talk about let me know in the comments down below please thank you guys so much for joining me here today make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you hit the bigger subscribe button below me if you'd like to see more of me and i'll catch y'all next time have a great one bye